had metal wheels. They had they were made usually out of very fine wood or later on they were made from metal and very nice woodwork was combined with it. You entered from the front where the motorman was, the person that would sit and move levers to make it go forward and to break it, which means to stop it. The trolley ran on railroad tracks that were put into the ground. All right? The, it made the sound, didn't have a buzzer, it didn't have a horn, it made the sound as if you have a fire drill bell and the guy would clank it. So therefore you have the song that Miss Sherman is singing, clank clank when the trolley, that's the sound it made. The trolley would roll down the street, not because it had wheels, it would roll because on top of the roof of the trolley was a bowl and the pole was connected to the electric wires that were on top, like a Spider-Man. You know, the, the idea of a wire was called a web. So there were several wires. Some of the wires went horizontally. They were connected vertically, but they were electrified, which means it was electricity. These wires were connected to huge holes that were on either side of the street. And on top was the electrical wires. And this pole, as long as it made the contact, it made the motors inside the trolley work. These were electric motors. No gasoline, no diesel, no oil. It was purely a motor. It's as if you put on a, take electric drill. When you press that trigger and there's electricity in it, there is sparking inside and you have what is known as electromagnetic field. You have coils with wires and it's positive or negative and that makes the motor work. So it was clean fuel because there was no exhaust. Sometimes you would see sparking, sparks. You would see that because the wire and the contact sometimes didn't make proper contact. If you go to Coney Island, you have bumper cars and the bumper cars have a hole on top and that's connected to the ceiling which has electricity. So now you can understand. But, they, but the trolley car was fixed which means it followed a roof and it curved and it would go, sometimes you would have one trolley going north, another trolley going south. They would pass each other. That meant they would take up most of the road. They took up a good part of the road. Very few people, one second, very few people had cars in those days. And therefore, very few people had cars that were parked on the street. So therefore, the trolley took up most of the street. You had push carts on some of the streets where people sold things. You had push carts on this one, and the rest of the people would walk. You, to get on the trolley, frequently you had to stand on a trolley platform, which was in many cases a raised platform, like a little stage, and you stood in front of it, and the trolley, you would enter here, and you would exit here, and the driver would say what it was, what you were going to. Some of these trolleys connected to other trolleys, and therefore you made transfers from one to the other. Over the Williamsburg Bridge was a hub. A hub is a place that many trolleys come together. And what happened is, you got off one, and some of these would go on like a bicycle wheel. One would go this way, one would go this way, one would go this way, from the hub, from the main place. And this is the way people used to travel. So someone from General Motors that used to make, that makes cars, convinced many cities, get rid of your trolleys. Why? They take up too much street space. They're not that efficient, and they put it, they were, got rid of the trolleys. Sometimes they took the tracks and they covered it with asphalt. They covered it. Sometimes they yanked it out of the ground and made new streets, and they put in electric buses. Regular buses that were connected to a pole, which used the wires overhead, and that became, so a bus now was able to go this way. A bus was able to go close to the curb, away from the curb, as long as they were connected, electricity, let's get rid of these buses, 
get rid of the wires because it doesn't look very good and they put in diesel buses these were buses that had those engines in the back and they used to smell a black smoke would come out and this was not gasoline this was diesel a special type of fuel made by a German scientist called diesel so the fuel was named after him and that polluted the air and that made me sick when I was a kid because I couldn't take the smell of that bus uh, fuel and later on some of the buses now have clean fuel which means they put in something that looks like a small barrel that they have beer in and that's compressed compressed uh, gas like you have in the stove and that drives the bus so it's a cleaner fuel question yes it made no difference. The road was fine. It may have been sparking a little bit, but it was okay. Yes, but that's wrong. Yeah, the sparks fall down, but they didn't hurt anybody. That's a good. That's a good point. But the trolleys were very popular. You were able to. Many city, cities had it. Now in San Francisco, it looks like a trolley car, but it's not a trolley car. They call it a cable car. Underneath the ground, there is a cable, a big wire that goes around, and the tr and the uh, the trolley car is attached to the cable. So as the cable moves, the car moves. So that's a different system. But most cities. Now, what happened to many of the trolleys? They were bought by companies that made it into museums. They made it into diners, like for example, selling food. And some people bought it to decorate their you know, lawns. They had a lot of houses. In New Haven, Connecticut, there's a big museum of trolleys. It still says Brooklyn on it and other things. They fixed them over, they made them beautiful, and they charge you a fee and they give you a ride for 20 minutes. It's riding on a railroad, but without, without that sound, without the pollution, clean, clean transportation. We wish we had some of the trolleys back. So what does a school like NYU do? They build a car that looks like a trolley car. They put rubber tires on it, and they put an engine and a driver, and they drive the students around NYU. It looks like a trolley body, but it's on wheels. Yes. <coughs> Before, when you were talking about the cable car, yeah. isn't there like a big factory that it has like the wheels spinning? Yes, so the yes, cable yes, yes, that's right. It's, it comes from a central place and the wheel moves. Some of you have seen this idea when you go skiing up a mountain. Your, your gondola or your little building is connected to a wire and as the wire goes around, you go with it and you see the wire, the big wire move. But that's a different type of concept. So this was very, very, if you go to the transit museum, you see models of trolley cars. Now you're too young to remember, your parents are too young to remember, your grandparents may be too young to remember, maybe, because they were put out of service around 19... 60 or so, 1958, they started, the city started getting rid of it. So I was a young kid, and I used to ride them, and some people would do something funny. They would take a penny, put it on a trolley car, and when the trolley car would go by, the penny would be stretched a little bit. It would be flattened, because some people tried to pass the penny off as a dime. So if you flatten a penny, sometimes it looks like a dime, like a nickel, or, or a nickel would be big, flattened. Now they're machines. When you go to some places, they take a penny and they stretch it for you. You pay extra for that. They'll see so, that when they go to yeah, Philadelphia, yeah, they yeah. have those machines. Yeah. Now the tracks were, the tracks were very unusual in that they were built almost like this. And the trolley, the trolley was between the tracks between the tracks and they were buried in the ground which means that you saw it so in Brooklyn a few months ago they dug them up in some places and they fixed the streets so they, some of the streets still have the trolley tracks on in the ground but they're covered up because we're not using it anymore. We saw pictures of that in places in the city but yeah. still you can see it. you know one of the questions and I forget who it was asked and I really couldn't give a good answer because it had to do with braking. Yes. And they said in, in the movie that we watched that the uh, the trolley car brakeman or conductor yeah. driver 
when they wanted to stop, they would use a certain kind of uh, lever, yeah. and that would grab the cable and make it stop. But so that's the question was, what about the other uh, trolleys well, on the line? Yeah. Wouldn't that interrupt no. there? Well, so I have a feeling that the trolley, the way it stopped, is that there must have been a brake system here. I mean, you, when you braked it, and what it did was it grabbed the... Uh, the uh, wheel and what happens with the friction against it like a car today when you put your foot on the brake your brake sits between something like this and as the wheel goes through this squeezes against it but, but remember but they cannot stop on the spot if you run in front of it it takes time to stop even if a bicycle if you're riding a bicycle and, you, and someone runs in front of you no matter how fast you are by the time you put on the brakes the box, you're still moving forward. It, if you travel at 40 miles per hour, it may, it may take you 80 feet to stop before you hit someone. 